Hello, and welcome to Lecture 2 of the Work Unit in Phys 1104. We've seen before that our choice of system is in some sense arbitrary. We always have to get the same answers, no matter what choice of system we make. But, as we'll see in this lecture, there are times when doing our energy accounting when certain choices of system are much better than other choices. In the last lecture, we saw these two different system choices for this situation of a brick compressing a spring. And in particular, one of them is a closed system, whereas the other is not closed. And so the energy bar chart for the first choice looks like this, where we see that the system is converting gravitational potential energy into spring potential energy, whereas in the non-closed case, the system is gaining energy because work is being done on it by an outside force, and all of that gained energy ends up as spring potential energy. So far, so good, but think about what we actually use energy bar charts to do. Ultimately, an energy bar chart is a pictorial representation of our equation of conservation of energy for the system. Now, I usually avoid writing equations in the first one or two lectures of a unit, because I want those lectures to be focused on the ideas, not the math. But the whole point of an energy bar chart is that it represents an equation. So here's the equation that this one is representing. It's saying that the initial energies add up to the same quantity as the final energies. And in particular, the bar chart is showing us that one of those energies is zero. And so we can simplify it right away, and we have an equation which is very useful if we want to solve for something. On the other hand, in the non-closed situation, we don't end up with an equation. We end up with an inequality, or you could say it's telling us that the spring potential energy is initially zero and later it's not zero. But if we want to solve for something, that is certainly less useful. The problem here is that our bar chart is missing a piece. It's missing the work. And the work is the change in the system energy. So in other words, the final system energy is bigger or smaller than the initial system energy by an amount that's equal to the work done. So if we can include that in the bar chart, we should have all our bars add up to the same size on both sides. The way I'm going to do that is that I'm going to put a section of the bar chart in between the initial energy and the final energy where I will put the work. And when we convert the bar chart into an equation, just remember that the equals sign goes over by one of the two dotted lines, the one that's after the work. The reason I'm organizing the bar chart this way is that I want to stress that the work isn't part of the initial energy or part of the final energy. Remember, it's the change in energy. Let's check your understanding of how to include work in an energy bar chart. So, here I have a situation where we have two carts on low friction wheels, and they're connected together by a spring which is initially relaxed. And a person pushes on them so that they both speed up, and the spring compresses as a result. The system, as I've shown in the diagram, is the two carts and the spring. And choose which of these is the correct energy bar chart.